Hello guys, welcome to today's video. So today's is a slightly different review. Although you see a full bike over here, but also you will see there is a Dura A sticker that masks away the brand of the frame. And today's review is a Shimano Dura A 12 speed 9200 Di2 first impression review. Let's go. So as usual, I will break the videos into a few major parts which include the crankset, the derailleur, front and rear, the wheel set and also some of the new technology that inject into this new group set. So if you are in the bicycle community or you are a cyclist, you probably already know who is Shimano. But if you are new here, how I usually explain to my friends who know nothing about bicycle is like Shimano is like a Toyota in the bicycle world. They take up the major market share in the world so if you look at the world tour 80% uh, or 90% of the of the pro team are using Shimano components so of course the Shimano business contain a lot more categories and bicycle component is one of them with recent announcement of the Shimano Dura Ace 9200 Di2 it pushed Shimano to the front page of the major cycling media again so before I break down the things a full group set usually contain a uh, crank set your shifters your brake, your front and rear derailleur. So let's start from the most significant part within a group set, which is the crank set. As you can see over here, the crank set is designed in a glossy black finishing. The shape is rather odd, I would say, uh, compared to 9100 uh, because it looks a bit beefy and chunky, yet the harmony is not there personally it's not really my taste but i guess there must be something to do with the engineering so the crankset actually come with a different chain ring size one of the highlight of this crankset is it come with a 5340 crankset which is something different compared to what we have for the past few years so as usual you have compact which is 5034 this one over here is a 5034, semi compact with a 5236. And the uh, standard uh, back then it was 5339, but now it is 5440. I think probably because it is now 12 speed. With the difference of the gear ratio now, 5440 makes a lot more sense for the pro. And of course, as a top of the line group set from Shimano, this crankset is using the signature Shimano 24mm spindle, Holotech 2 technology few advantages is very easy to maintain it's widely supported by the third party in the industry and home mechanic will love it this crankset also come with a power meter option which uh, it will be great for your training you can have your power reading and with that there is a lot more data that you can analyze to know your performance and also one of the thing that's always ignored by a lot of people the crank arm length as usual this round it come with 165 170, 172.5. I'm not sure if they, they come with 180, but you will see in the pro world, Shimano always come out something very dedicated for the pro rider. But for the mass market, I guess 165, 170, and 172.5 are more than enough to cater for most of us. So now let's move on to the shifter. So as I mentioned, always mentioned in my video, the contact point when you're riding a bicycle is usually your saddle your pedal and also your handlebar well the shifter is attached to the handlebar which is actually one of your contact point as well so as we can see the shape of the shifter of course they will use improved but i would say different is it improved it depends on you if you like it or not so you can see the shape are slightly tilted outwards which says increase the aerodynamic and also it's more natural to have your hand in this position compared to this and also uh, the reach is slightly longer i can't remember the measurement but now you can fit three finger at here compared to two finger back then so with three finger you can have better control more surface contact means more grip so as this is a di2 group set right you will have your shifter in the electronic form so you don't have that long pull uh, to shift your gear, you just very minimal effort to click that button and then you can shift your gear. One thing that I like about Shimano Di2 is you will have an extra button at the top of your hood which you can use ANT Plus to connect to your 
cycle computer so you can change your uh, data page you can do your own setting like you want if you want to change it to shifting uh, you can do it as well and of course the major highlight of this group set will be the shifter is now wireless from here although you see it's very clean in front there's no cable nothing uh, this bike of course is an internal cable bike but there's basically wireless for this shifter to be connect to the front and rear derailleur the only things that connect out will be the hydraulic disc brake hose now that's the shifter and of course the shifter are used to shift the front and rear derailleur so let's move on to front and rear derailleur so let's start from the front derailleur first now the front derailleur is rather dull in terms of the upgrade uh, it's not really a very impactful change uh, now you can see the derailleur are smaller in size in terms of the the depth and also in terms of the the height so overall it is much smaller compared to derailleur 9100 and of course the main highlight right is actually the rear derailleur so when we say 12 speed usually the front got no different uh, the trend now is of course one by but two by is still standard for road riding so 12 speed at the back the rear derailleur it supports 12 speed at the back and how is the wireless things work is this thing this rear derailleur is actually working as the d fly of the whole group set it's like the brain to communicate with the shifter and to shift but there is cable that connect the rear derailleur to front derailleur to the battery this rear triangle is actually cable connected to each other so to charge a battery over here which hide inside your seat post or your frame uh, you have to charge from here there is a charging port over here where you where the charger is actually magnetic now you can just snap on it and then it start charging back then it was charging by using the d fly or junction box which is located be uh, below your stem or at your handlebar and plug uh, it's something nice to have because uh, at this distance it's probably nearer to your wall plug and there's less cable mess around and of course are you sure uh, it's a shadow design which designed to make your derailleur hide under the cassette instead of protrude out in any case of crash although we don't want that to be happen but the damage to the derailleur will be minimized and of course it is now support 1130 and 1134 which is a good news for most of us who are a social rider we don't need 1128 or 1125 anymore and of course when we talk about the rear derailleur uh, it shift among the cassette so cassette is always one of the things that always neglected la. it seems like nothing interesting there's no electronic part in it uh, it's just a piece of steel but it is so damn important in your bicycle so 12 speed over here so shimano actually add a 16t uh, within the 12 speed so you still get the same uh, highest gear which is 11 you will same get the lowest gear which is 34 why do we need 12 speed so according to Shimano the 16T is the sweet spot that the 11 speed is missing so if you are into road riding long enough you will understand how important is your cadence uh, there will be a situation where one gear up is too light one gear down is too heavy so and you just can't find your sweet spot for your cadence and with that uh, it's basically solved the issue and this now the cassette also come with uh, something really great technology which i think benefit to all of us uh, instead of just the pro rider uh, it come with this hyperglide plus technology this is something new in road but actually it's not that new from mountain bike so mountain bike world has been enjoying this for uh, one or two years so hyperglide is a uh, technology terms from shimano so back then it was always hyperglide and now it's a hyperglide plus so what's the plus means when you are riding there is always a situation where you need to change gear suddenly or immediately uh, especially when you face a steep hills right in front of you you always need to back off your power when you shift because 
because that kind of give a stress to the rear derailleur or the derailleur hanger. Now with this Hyperglide Plus, you basically don't have to back off your power and you can shift gears directly. Uh, you don't get those loud noise anymore. So all these things is actually more important in our all day riding compared to lighter, faster, more aero. I think those who experience snapping the uh, derailleur hanger before one uh, will understand what I'm saying. And also, uh, because you get a new profile for your cassette, so you will have a new profile for your chain as well, so that it's compatible to the Hyperglide Plus. Um, the chain over here is nothing new, it's not a Dura H chain, it's actually a XTR M9100 mountain bike group set chain. Like I said, uh, the mountain bike world already enjoy this Hyperglide plus technology for one or two years so it makes a lot of sense for for shimano to just share the chain among these two so for those like me who come from the 11 speed world i will have a question like you see if you see shram uh, you have to change quite a lot of things even your free hub body because the cassette doesn't support the regular 11 speed free hub but Shimano over here, they, they took a very different approach. So the new 12-speed cassette is actually backwards support to your 11-speed free hub. But they also have a new free hub that can only support 12-speed and maybe above in the future. So you see, the transition period are less painful. If I were to go to 12-speed, I don't have to change my wheel set. I don't have to change my wheel hub. It just backward compatible now we already go through the drivetrain and also the shifting system there's one part that is very important uh, which is the brake system as you can see this bike over here uh, of course again it is a disc brake bike right um, the roto looks very familiar it's actually mt900 roto same thing share from the mountain bike world instead of the dura ace the the dura ace uh, rt 900 roto still the best looking roto in my eye but according to them the mt 900 roto are better in terms of modulation so of course performance oriented uh, cyclists or performance oriented pro cyclists will love this the caliper it is now i think it's smaller and also if you are a disc brake rider you probably suffer from that disc brake roto rubbing now it is a 10% wider pack clearance which means if you're switching your wheel set you probably won't get that disrupt anymore so you don't have to like change wheel set and then you have to align your caliper you don't have to do that anymore it also support the shimano servo wave technology there is a lot of technical words behind this but in layman term it just break easier you will be able to control your brake power in a more precise way uh, for the home mechanic as well uh, you have now have a bleed port that integrated to your caliper I, although i am quite handy in terms of servicing my own bike but i have no experience in terms of disc brake bleeding so what i said might be wrong the older model you actually have to remove the whole caliper to bleed the brake but the new model you don't have to do that anymore drivetrain braking system and of course the major major part in bicycle the wheel set so the wheel set over here as you can see is a it is a dura is c50 carbon wheel set so many years ago if you look at the group set poster right a group set actually come together with a wheel set and wheel set is always a remarkable component in a bicycle in market right dura is wheel set will never the popular choice a lot of people like to buy fulcrum a lot of people like to buy campagnolo so shimano dura ace wheel set will never popular in the local group right you hardly see people use it but if it's good enough for the pro it's probably good enough for you if you compare to zip or if you compare to campagnolo you don't have that uh, sawtooth profile you don't have the golf ball surface but shimano wheels are always there so this round up dura is actually come with three rim depth which is the 36 50 and 60. Uh, just like any other wheel set right uh, 36 acceleration oriented climber wheel 50 all-rounder you can climb you get aero benefit as well c60 60 mm profile aero all the way personally 
I've never ridden a Dura Ace wheel set before, but those of you quite familiar with me probably know that, oh, I like some things that's pretty. I really like how this generation wheel set design. It is a matte black carbon rim with a very subtle Dura Ace C50 uh, logo type on it. The internal width is actually 21mm, uh, which is up to today's trend. Uh, if you want to put, slap on a 28mm tires, it will fit nicely it is tubeless ready uh, if you're someone who care a lot about rolling resistance at the competitive side tubeless no-brainer and of course you still can put on your tube so because it is for the pro right the option for the wheel shot is quite wide so you have tubular rim brake and then you have tubular disc brake and then you have tubeless disc brake but you don't have tubeless rim brake even though some of the pro cyclists don't like this brake but i guess it, it make a lot of sense for the bike brand or the group set brand so we can see ever since uci announced this brake is legal the rim brake go off the scene in a very rapid speed i guess they only took one or two seasons to have 98 percent of the team are using this brake now so of course you don't have tubeless rim brake um now there's some of the things that you need to know before if you would to buy this so one of the major change all the benefit the, the the wireless shifter benefit the servo wave benefit the technology are not applicable for a rim brake version so yes although shimano still produce a rim brake group set but if you're buying a Dura Ace 9200 rim brake DI2, you won't get a wireless shifter. You still need to connect your cable to your battery, connect to, to your rear derailleur, which work as a D-fly now. Uh, you, of course, you don't get servo wave technology. And then the wheel set only come with a tubular version, which is not practical for all of us. Lah. We just, this doesn't make any sense for us to ride tubular on road. So I guess that's all for the group set but there's two more things so if you have been cycling for long enough you pay attention to the the bicycle world news you probably know the pro is actually a, a Shimano subsidiary company that produced the component something very special over here in this bike you will see the saddle is actually a pro style saddle uh, with a cutout and a carbon shell so it's very lightweight I don't know how much is it but it's just very lightweight. Short nose saddle has been a trending thing since three or four years ago, I think. A few years ago, lah. I think ever since Specialized Power Saddle launched. Something very interesting is this handlebar here. It's actually integrated bar from Pro, and this is the top range aero bar. Lah. It's called Pro Vibes Evo. What is so special about this thing? So it's a it's an integrated bar and you actually have a rubber grip at your palm surface. And if you don't want to use your bar tape, they actually have a long grip where you can insert until until your shifter so it looks very clean. You also have two hole over here for you to place your satellite shifter so you can shift when you are climbing instead of moving your hand to your shifter and shift now all this is very pro oriented personally i don't like integrated bar unless it's like my bike the one come with the double decals i have no choice i think that's all for today's video thank you very much for bike science malaysia for borrowing me this bike to do this review i hope i give more insights if you are in the market for um, shimano dura ace group set and of course, I can't wait for Shimano Altegra uh, to be here in Malaysia. So now, the next part will be three things I like and three things I don't like. So now I come back to three things I like and three things I don't like. So I will start from things that I like first. The first thing that I like will be the 12-speed cassette is actually backward compatible with your old 11 speed wheel set i would say this is the thing that is really good for most of us who are coming from the 11 speed world like i said in the video the transition period if i want to upgrade or whatever uh, is less painful and is uh, basically minimal impact lah, especially for people like me in the wallet it's not that thick the second things that i like will be the hyper glide plus so i did some stress test uh, with the hyper glide plus and i can see like it really shift uh, very smooth when you pedal right and then you just shift and then you will clack, 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 go out super smooth not like how it used to be lah, uh, back then when you want to shift under pressure uh, it's actually sounds quite scary so the third thing that i like will be the 
better ergonomic so the gap in between your shifter and your hood are wider um, the shape of the hood are optimized now you feel a bit more comfortable when you are riding on the hood so comfort is something that i always stress about and is always more than welcome now three things that i don't like so the first thing that i don't like will be the approach of semi wireless uh, group set is not really practical for most of us as a weekend hero or social cyclist it definitely make a lot of sense for the pro because they are not the one who maintain their bike but for us it's just less complicated but it's still complicated i still have uh, removed a lot of stuff there's still batteries inside there's still cable inside i still need to route the cable when i need to i would say it just minimized it's not it it didn't really solve the problem in comparison right SRAM ETAP actually don't have this pain at all because it's totally wireless if SRAM don't have this in the market yes this semi wireless things might be great when the industry already moved forward to somewhere further uh, but this semi wireless i feel like it's something half big the second thing that i don't like is it is now uh, electronic only rest in peace uh, mechanical group set as much as people tell me about how great is wireless group set i still see problem in it me personally witness a few cases of problem arise because it is electronic there is cases like halfway riding the, the battery flat uh, something wrong with the with the shifting and i won't be able to fix when i'm riding on the road i think in terms of reliability the mechanicals are much more uh, reliable compared to electronic although i know the electronic is improved the third thing that i don't like it seems like they integrated everything at the rear derailleur that is this, this is something like placing all the eggs in one basket for me uh, because the rear derailleur i would say is kind of fragile if you have a crash and rear derailleur is actually the component that take the impact so of course i know that it's a shadow technology where it's actually hide under the cassette and all those but like i say if you have anything wrong touch wood you got a crash and that caused the rear derailleur not working anymore while well, you were stuck with single speed again lah. so that's all for my shimano dura ace 9200 di2 d's first impression review so if you like this video do subscribe to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notification whenever i upload a new video and until the next one bye bye